Okay, to install the RMM electric conversion bracket kit and motor kit, you're going to need your main bracket, your main bracket hardware bag, your motor bracket, your drivetrain kit and motor bracket hardware bag, a motor, which you either bought yourself or it comes with the level two kits. As far as tools, uh, needle nose pliers, our socket wrench with a 13 millimeter socket and also a 12 millimeter socket, slip joint pliers, 17 millimeter open end box wrench, whatever you want to call it, four millimeter hex key, three millimeter hex key, two and a half millimeter hex key. This is a six millimeter hex key, definitely need that. And this is just an extra three millimeter that I can use to tighten stuff a little tighter if I need. I'm actually gonna be using a drill with a six millimeter and a three millimeter. That'll just speed up installation considerably if you have that. If not, you don't need that. Okay, I'm gonna be installing on the Scott's Pro 18. Uh, this process is exactly the same on all mowers, so you can use this video for any installation for our bracket kits. Okay, to start, we're gonna remove the wheels. You'll need your 13 millimeter socket and a 17 millimeter box wrench. You can stick that in there. You're gonna grab this nut on the inside, right there, and then loosen this right here. Should be able to just spin that off by hand. Set that aside. See, this is where the towel comes in handy because you can just set stuff down and it doesn't roll away. This whole assembly, just grab this in this plate and it should just pull out. Okay, go ahead and just set that aside for now. Uh, inside here, you're gonna see that there is this gear and this plate. We're actually not gonna be using the gear any longer. And we don't need that for the electric conversion kit, so we'll set that aside. I also don't recommend putting the plates on there, uh, just because that's a way to trap grass, so it's not really needed. Set the wheel aside. You can also use this towel to wipe your hands too, so it's pretty handy. Next, we're gonna go to the other side and take that wheel off. Okay, on the other side, same thing. Grab that nut on the inside. assembly off let the mower sit down and the bed reel or the reel blade will be fine on the towel there again we're going to take the shield off here and then just set the wheel aside there okay next step you're going to need your 12 millimeter socket you're going to remove the front crossbar then you remove this front bolt here And same thing on the other side. Okay, set that hardware aside. Okay, the next thing, we're gonna give our 13 millimeter socket again. We're gonna go to the bed knife bolts and you're just gonna slightly loosen this. I would say only like half a turn, not much. Same thing on both sides. We don't wanna mess with the bed knife much. We're just loosening this just barely so that we can get a little bit of flex. You're also going to want to loosen the rear roller just to create a little bit of slack. Okay. All right. So all you do is you come over here and you're just going to push that apart a little bit and this bracket will actually slide out. Okay, set that aside. Then you're just gonna grab your new RMM conversion bracket. You're going to slide one side in and make sure that the front of it is behind there. 
And then um, kind of the same process as the other side, you're just going to push that and slide it behind until it is behind both brackets like so. Okay, get your bracket hardware back, pump that out. Should have six uh, 25 millimeter metric 10 bolts, two 20 millimeter ones, your 30 millimeter standoffs for stock wheels, and then the metric 10 nuts. Also, you're gonna need the stock axle bolts from the wheels, so grab both of those. Now, if you're going to run stock wheels, um, all you're going to need to do is grab four of the 25 millimeter metric 10 bolts, your standoffs, and then also these 20 millimeters. So just come over here to the side bracket. And you can see that you just have to line up the holes here. In that hole and in this hole and then you can pick where you want your stock wheels to go i'm going to use the bottom position so i'm going to go ahead and put bolts in both of these holes and then to install the standoff you just take your 20 millimeter and come from the inside and then you're going to just thread that on there like so and then do the same thing on the corresponding side. Now you might find that the handlebar will interfere with the bracket slightly. Just kind of move that out of the way while you're installing. It's not gonna be an issue with the actual use of the bracket. It's just temporary while you're installing here. So put that there, this one here. And then the same thing, come with this bolt from the inside. Sometimes it's a little tricky to go. And attach your standoff. Now, if you're gonna add the front roller, the quick adjust front roller kits, you're gonna go, need to go ahead and put those brackets on now, and we're gonna go ahead and do that. Go ahead and grab your bracket. Now with this one, uh, you're, you have different positions. So I would leave this bottom hole open for the standoff if you're gonna use transit wheels. Get that lined up here. Same thing, you're going to put this bolt on the inside here. And you might find this a lot easier to do if you just tip this back a little bit here. Maybe like so. And just go ahead and get this little standoff started. That'll help hold everything together there. Okay. And we'll move to the other side. Okay, got our roller front roller bracket on this side as well. I'm going to put a bolt in the top hole there. We're also going to put one in the back hole here. And then our 20 millimeter goes from the inside, like on the other side. Whoops. I'm going to trade positions with you here, cameraman. that on there this is the probably the most difficult part of the bracket install so if this is stressing you out a little bit don't worry the rest of it is way more simple 
All right, now once you have those, what I suggest to get all the nuts on is to go ahead and tip it up on its side like so, like this, and just kind of use the handlebar to, so bring your needle nose in here. You can see I'm just positioning the nut right under this bolt and spinning it so it'll get started. Might take you a couple tries, but don't worry, it's pretty, pretty easy to get going. All right, once you get it started, careful not to cut your hands on the real blade. It's not super sharp. Um, can be, but just be careful. And then we're gonna get one on this one. Now this is where the drill comes in super handy because I can just grab the nut like so with the needle nose. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I can just grab my 17 millimeter wrench and just easily tighten this up here. Now it doesn't need to be all the way snug yet, just close. Same with this one. Get that close. Now we're going to flip it over to the other side. Okay. Same thing over here. Get these bolts to this bracket. And then we're going to use our needle nose pliers to get our nut started. Get that one started. And get that one started as well. Alright, now I'm going to get my drill. all right so now one thing to make note of here before you tighten this down you want this bracket edge and the stock bracket edge aligned flat and flush so make sure of that before you tighten this once you're sure of that go ahead and stick your box wrench in there and start hand tightening this hex key, you can use the drill if you want. I just use that to speed up the initial, but this is where we want our brackets positioned. So again, check that it hasn't moved here, make sure we're flush. Okay, and then we're gonna get that one tight. Now go ahead and tighten this up. Pretty darn tight, it should stay tight easily with the lock nut. Go ahead and move over to your other one here. And then we're gonna go ahead and tighten our standoff. So to do that, we already have our 17 millimeter. And then we just need to come from underneath. And get this snug up here. All right, make sure we're tight. Rack is still flush, go ahead and flip. The mower over again. Just be careful with your hands. Okay. Now we're gonna do the same thing. Make sure the bracket's flush here. Looks pretty good. Okay. 
I'm gonna do that one, okay? And we're gonna tighten up this. Now we're in business. So I go ahead and set the mower right side up. And then go ahead and tighten your rear roller if you loosened it for slack. Get that back in shape, that's good. And then you're gonna wanna go ahead and retighten the bed knife bolts, which shouldn't really be too loose. See over here. And tighten that back. And the other one. Okay, now we're gonna install our motor kit and motor bracket. You'll need your motor bracket, motor, and your drivetrain motor bracket hardware kit, and also a four millimeter hex. Okay, set that aside. We're gonna grab the four smallest hex bolts and our motor bracket and set this up here. Now hold this here or it will kind of fall off until you get it secured because it's a little heavy. Okay. Put these threaded in here. You can do it pretty quickly if you have a hex key. Pretty good. Next, we're going to be installing this long bracing bolt. And the concept here is we're going to remove this motor bracket bolt and replace it with this longer one and it goes all the way down and braces off of the stock mower frame. What this is gonna do is basically eliminate a lot of the flex that the bracket has. We intentionally gave it some flex just so that the chain wouldn't break if you ever encountered, encountered hard resistance, but this is going to just stiffen this up a bit to lessen the likelihood of the chain possibly coming off but that will mostly be taken care of by the tensioner that we're going to install momentarily. And go ahead and thread in this new one. It should be a pretty good fit with the washer we've included. Um, depending on your setup, we'll go over what the fitment is supposed to be like. But basically, you want the bottom of this bolt contacting the frame if it looks like it's too high you can just take the washer out but most setups will use the washer so basically once you verify that it's touching you just want to tighten this nice and tight don't go too crazy because this is aluminum but it should be able to get pretty tight this one. Snug those up. And you can just tighten those really good and hard hand tight and we should be fine. All right, now we're gonna get our chain here. Next thing we're gonna do is install our sprocket. So for this, you'll need your stainless steel shim tape, your sprocket, and this bottle of Loctite here. You also are going to need the three millimeter and two and a half millimeter hex keys. Now, uh, use a little isopropyl alcohol, spray this shaft down and clean it real good. You want to make sure that there's no grease on there from when you took off the sprocket or the gear rather from the start drive. Once that's clean and dry, you're going to take your stainless steel shaft tape and you're going to basically wrap this around the shaft um, right about in the middle of it. I like that. So start by unpeeling it, which is a little bit tricky.
Now the reason we're doing this is just to get a nice tight fit on the sprocket. The way that these sprockets are machined, it's not gonna be specific to the every shaft exactly, it's just pretty close. So this helps us get a tighter fit so that the rotating assembly is just better. And honestly, you'll have a better time if you stick this off the edge of the table so you can wrap clean. So just put that on there, use your finger to smooth it. Be careful on the edges of this stuff. It is pretty darn sharp. You can see I'm just kind of wrapping it around and it's pretty firm. It's gonna lay down flat, but you don't want any wrinkles. You want it to be smooth. I'm just smoothing my thumb and you can see that it's perfectly smooth all the way around. Now we're gonna check to make sure the sprocket fits, which it should, and just kind of work it over. Don't force it, just kind of slide it slow. Okay, we're not, we're not trying to tear up our tape here. You can see that it fits pretty snug, but that's what we want. We don't wanna tear up the tape, but that's just perfect. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is find where there was the indention in the shaft, which is right here. And you're just gonna to wanna to poke this with a, a knife. Just cut it a little bit. You'll need a razor blade, this stuff's pretty strong, so. We're just gonna kind of poke it because we're gonna install a screw through that. So when we slide this on, we want the both of these uh, little screws on the inside so that the flat side is out that way. So when you slide this on, align the bolt that's sticking out with this hole here. So slide it on carefully. And what we're gonna do is thread that right down through that hole and what that does is provide a way for, for this to lock in and never be able to spin out because the bolt is holding it through the axle so that it's very secured. Let's go ahead and tighten that firmly. And then we're gonna grab the two and a half millimeter hex and tighten our knurled set screw. Put that firmly in there, dig it nice and deep and just tighten it real good and tight. You don't wanna break it off, but nice and tight. Okay, all right. Clean them up. Okay, to install the tensioner, basically you just need to remove the bolt on, or the nut on the bottom. Should look like this here. And then you're going to just slip it down in the hole. Make sure that this nut on top is completely tight to the top of the bolt there. If it won't go through, you might need to use the drill bit to kind of aug it out a little bit, but it should be pretty easy to get it to fit in there. Like so. Now you can go ahead and thread this bottom nut on just a little bit, but you just want to leave it loose for now. All right, now that that's installed, you can go ahead and grab your motor Place it back there. You can put your chain on. Now, since the tensioner is on here now, this is going to be a little bit more difficult if you have a new chain. If your chain has been stretched out, uh, it's not gonna be a big deal. But if you have issues getting it on, basically what you'll have to do is just kind of roll the reel and the chain will pop onto the gears. It should be pretty simple though. If you have any issues with that, feel free to reach out and we can try to explain that, but it should be pretty easy to get on there. Go ahead and thread in your motor mount bolts. Make sure that you're in the right holes, otherwise it will bottom out pretty quickly. The way you can do that is make sure that these vent holes are lined up. Okay, go ahead and get those kind of hand tight. Now there's a specific way you want to do this to make sure it's the easiest. What I recommend is basically just grabbing the motor underneath 
and go ahead and just kind of get it hand tight pull the motor up just as tight as you can nothing crazy and go ahead and snug these up not anything super tight just kind of enough to hold the motor and then you're going to want to come under here and push this all the way up till it's touching the motor and then spin this nut down to where it's all the way as far down as you can get it that way it's nice and close so that you don't have to sit in there with a the wrench and turn it several times to get it pretty close to tight now what we're going to do is basically just barely loosen these just enough to where the motor can slide up and down but not to where it's like shaking around so just barely barely loose the next thing you're going to need is your 13 millimeter box wrench and a pair of needle nose pliers all right the easiest way to tighten the tensioner once you have these bolts just slightly loose is to go from the back side right through here and grab the top of the nut with your needle nose pliers this is the best angle right through there like that okay and then you're going to come around to the front take your 13 millimeter wrench and you're going to turn this nut clockwise while holding the bolt and you can see that that's tightening up the chain okay getting tighter all right so basically as far as the chain tension what you want to see is in the middle about a quarter inch of deflection which means from straight you can push it in about a quarter of an inch. All right, once you've gotten the chain tensioner set where there's about a quarter inch of play here, go ahead and tighten these down nice and tight. And then we're going to secure the chain tensioner. The best way to do this is to come back from the back the same way, grip the nut here with your needle nose pliers And then slowly turn this nut until you get it nice and tight. This can be a little tricky because of the chains in the way. What I'm doing here is basically rotating it to change the angle of the open end. Just kind of back and forth to get that little bit of play that's needed. And then you'll notice it's starting to tighten up and you want to tighten this pretty snug you don't have to go crazy but the it could come loose with vibration all right it's almost tight should, all right, that should be good all right and just double check that your chain tension is still about a quarter inch make sure that the reel spins freely that you don't have any issues Go ahead and put your wheel back on if you're using stock wheels and there's a little bit of a trick to putting this on you basically just want to line it up right in this groove in the bolt here and then you'll take your needle nose pliers and just kind of clamp down and it'll pop in all right and you should be in business